Here's something interesting. If you have been paying attention to the most popular NuGet packages for .NET testing, you have seen this Microsoft.testing.platform being mentioned. The NuGet package has over 40 million downloads, but when I ask around to most developers that I know, one thing I realize, most don't know why it exists and why it matters. So I decided to take a look on it and share with you because it's fascinating. Microsoft has been quietly building a completely new testing platform, not an update to the existing one, a complete rebuild from the ground up. And the cool thing is that every major testing framework is already moving to it. MES test, NUnit, XUnit, and there's even a new framework called TUnit that is entirely built on top of it. But there's something weird here. Do you know what? Most developers are still using the old approach. They are setting up new projects, new test projects in the same way they did five years ago, dealing with the same problems with the same complexity. Meanwhile, there's a new approach that is faster, simpler, and it fixed most of the issues that we have been complaining for years. So today, I want to show you what Microsoft Testing Platform actually is, how it works differently, and why frameworks like TUnit are betting on it. By the end of this video, you will understand why the .NET world is quietly changing on that direction in terms of testing. And more importantly, you will know whether this affects your projects or not. So let's start with the problem. Before we talk about the new approach, let me ask you something. Have you ever wondered why running tests feels so complicated? So you write a simple test, so it should be straightforward. But then, you need to have a test framework package, for example. You need to have something installed. It needs to be a specific type of project. There's a lot of things involved in order to run those tests. And if you dig into it, you will realize that when you run something like .NET test, there's multiple processes being invoked behind the scenes. Things like the VS test console, things like the test host, things like the data collector, all of those things are starting. It's like ordering a simple coffee and having three different people handling the cup, the coffee, and the leaf. So here's what's actually happening. VS Test, which has been the foundation for .NET testing since 2010, I think, was built for a different world. Back then, reflection was the standard approach. Dynamic loading was normal. Having multiple processes was just how things work. This creates problems. Your tests might pass locally, but fail on continuous integration. But why? Because VS Test relies on runtime behavior, reflection, dynamic assembly loading, isolated context. Depending on what machine you are running on, what's installed, what harder things are loaded, you can get a different behavior when you do that. I know developers who spend days debugging why tests pass locally, but they fail on Azure DevOps. And sometimes the issue is because they have some complex interactions between the test runner and now the assemblies are getting loaded. This is frustrating because tests are supposed to be predictable. When you run the same test twice, you should always get the same result. But VS Test can make that a bit more complicated than it should be. The good news is that if you have been doing simple tests for a long time, you might not have been exposed to these type of problems. In some advanced scenarios where we depend on assembly loading, on building context, assembly context, usually that thing can happen. But the good news is that we have abstractions nowadays that hide that type of complexity away from us. But there's other reasons for Microsoft testing platform. For example, there's another issue, native AOT. That thing that Microsoft keeps promoting for faster startup times. Because VS Test relies on reflection and dynamic loading, it's not compatible with native AOT, where this new platform is. So that's the current situation. Multiple processes, runtime dependencies, inconsistent behavior between the environments. Microsoft looked at this and decided to start fresh. So here's what Microsoft did. They looked at all the pain points with VS Test and asked, what if we designed this completely from scratch? The result is Microsoft Testing Platform. All the philosophy is fundamentally different in this new platform. 
The first major change is that there's no more separate executables. Your test project compiles to an executable. That executable will run your test directly. You don't need the VS Test Console, the Test Host, or none of those additional processes. Just your code running your tests. But here's the thing that stuck with me when I read about this new platform. They move everything to compile time instead of runtime. Instead of using reflection to discover your tests, when to run them, everything now is decided when you build your project at compile time. Think about it in this way. The old approach is like going to a restaurant where the chef figures out what ingredients they have while cooking the meal. The new approach is a pre-planned recipe where they have measured all the ingredients that they will need, they will do the mise en place. But what does that mean in practice? Your tests will run the same way every single time. They will be deterministic. Local machine, CI, Docker container, it doesn't matter. Because there's no runtime discovery, there's no dynamic loading, there's no variation in how things get loaded. Some benchmarks show a 10 time improvement in terms of test runtimes in some scenarios. And here's another thing that I really like. There's zero dependencies. The entire platform is one.net assembly. If you compare that to the traditional approach where you need to pull a ton of things in order to run your tests, it's a major improvement. You don't no longer need all of those processes, all of those packages. It can be something quite contained, quite simple. This could be just one more great idea that eventually would be dropped by Microsoft. But the good news is that the major testing frameworks are working on adopting it, on supporting it, on taking advantage of the Microsoft testing platform. There's even TUnit that is a great showcase of the potentials of the Microsoft testing platform. TUnit was built on top of it from the first day. They didn't try to retrofit the existing frameworks or try to use VS tests and be compatible with both. So they decided to design the new testing framework by taking advantage of this new strategy. And that's the reason why TUnit became so popular so fast. First, they use source generators instead of reflection. When you build your project, the compiler automatically generates all the test registration code, no runtime discovery, no performance hit. It works perfectly with native AOT. They even went one step further and tried to take advantage of it to bring extra features like built-in retry logic, parallel limits, features that you would normally need to implement yourself. And here's the key point. TUnit only works with Microsoft testing platform. And let me say this once again to make it clear. TUnit only works with Microsoft testing platform. They are not even supporting VS Test. That's a bold statement that the new platform is the future. While it's great to see popular frameworks like XUnit or MES Test moving to this new platform, maybe there's something bigger than replacing VS Test happening here. And that is taking advantage of all of this potential, of the things that have been happening in .NET for the past few years, and now we can take advantage of them for testing. This is not supposed to be a demo, but let me quickly show you how simple it is, so you have a glance on the advantages of using Microsoft Testing Platform. So, in the traditional approach, Let's say that you want to use something like XUnit, you will need to create a test project, you will need to add the XUnit package, you will need to use the XUnit runner, and you will need Microsoft.NET test SDK, all of that, just to write a simple and basic test. With Microsoft Testing Platform, for example, if you use MES test, you just need two lines in the project file. That's it, you add the MES test, test framework, and you are done. Now, when you run the .NET run, your tests execute directly. No .NET test, no separate tooling, just run your executable. That's a new thing that we have now access to it. But don't worry, the .NET test command is not being thrown away. You can still use the .NET test if you want. You just set the testing platform .NET test support to true, and it works both ways. The command line experience is different though. Instead of all of those VS test arguments, you now get a cleaner interface. For example, do you want to see the available tests? You run the .NET run, 
test dash, test dash, list dash tests. And if you want to filter, you also have another argument for it. In Visual Studio, it works exactly the same as before. Test Explorer can pick up all of those tests and run them, debug them whenever you need. Basically, the only difference is what's happening under the hood. Quick side note, you might need to enable a given option to have access to the Microsoft testing platform or in your ID. For example, if you are using Rider, that's a thing that you can find on the settings of your ID. Even then, I believe that this is simpler than it used to be. And in my experience, simplicity tends to win in the long run. So how can you start using this in the projects that you already have? It's possible to migrate. You might not do it overnight. It's not as simple as changing one package or changing one line, but sometimes it will be quite transparent. You don't need to do a lot of things. So here's what actually changes when you migrate. The common line options are different. Some VS test features are in support, like the blame functionality for crash dumps. And if you have custom data collectors or loggers, those might need to be rewritten. But Microsoft made the migration path pretty reasonable, in my opinion. All those build-related arguments uh, for the .NET tests will not change. The only things that can change are those that are test-specific. And honestly, most developers don't even use those advanced VS test features anyway. So probably just running tests and maybe collecting code coverage. And those scenarios work fine with Microsoft testing platform. The bigger consideration is the CI CD pipelines. For example, if you are using Azure DevOps with the VS test task, you might need to switch to .NET Core task, for example. Not a new change, but something that you need to plan for. My recommendation is that you start using it right away in your new projects. Once you are comfortable with it, gradually migrate the existing projects when you have time. Don't try to change everything at once. Those two platforms can coexist and changing all your test suites at once to the new platform might be a risk that you don't want to take in your only safety net. So why should you care about this anyway? The first important reason is performance. If you are running a huge test set, hundreds or thousands of tests, small performance improvements can quickly add up. You have faster feedback cycles and that improves the development cycle. Second is the predictability. Why? One important thing is making sure that your tests are predictable and they are deterministic. So random problems in your build pipelines because of strange behaviors will affect your team and the readability of those type of issues tend to be quite bad. So by using the testing platform, you will increase the confidence level that you have on, on those moments, on those complex tests. However, if you don't suffer with those type of strange problems, let me tell you one thing. If we look into the future, we can see that this will enable your existing testing platform, the one that you are using, to use it for new features, new capabilities that nowadays you don't have access to. You can look into TUnit and use that as a, an inspiration. As someone that is leading this new wave, and eventually the others will try to pull ideas from it. So you can see the types of things that eventually will have access to it. If you don't want to move to something like the unit, think about it as an investment to the moment when your testing framework takes advantage of those capabilities. For example, we have native AOT. With native AOT support, now you support running it on a container, for example, in serverless scenarios. Your test can execute and then being dropped quite quickly and being compiled to run inside of a container. And developer experience is just better. You have less configuration, fewer moving parts, more predictable behaviors, and all of that is a huge benefit for testing. But for me, the most important part is the fact that Microsoft is investing on this. So I can see uh, everything moving to it, for example, MES test. And that means that this is the future. So in other words, Think about Microsoft testing platform not as just a better version of VS Test. It's a completely new thing, a new approach that will enable new possibilities and a modern way of testing .NET code. So my advice is to try it out. Just try to see if your testing framework supports it. 
try to play with the unit, see the types of things that, that it's capable of. And if you are starting a new project today, check if the Microsoft testing platform is a possibility and start using it. This is the direction that .NET testing is moving. So it's not a waste of time to start with it. And if you are excited about this, maybe starting with the unit might be a good idea. So take a look into this video where you can see my first impression of the unit and how excited I am about the future of that testing framework. And I will see you in the next one.